Now, the next thing on our program is going to be four testimonies. Uh, there are four of us who are going to talk very briefly about uh, how Brother Roger King has impacted our lives. Um, first, it'll be myself, and then Minister Joan Blanchard, followed by Sister Queen Sanabria Allen, and then followed by Reverend Yvonne Pratier. Uh, I wanna say um, it's such a joy and a privilege and an honor just to see <laughs> Brother Roger. I have not seen him, had not laid eyes on him before yesterday. It had been since 1993. And that is when I traveled to Kenya with him. And what I want, the, the whole trip was just awesome, but I'm not even gonna talk about the trip. I'm gonna leave that up to uh, uh, Reverend Yvonne who's gonna mention something about that. But I just wanted to say that, that trip to Africa was a fulfillment of a lifelong dream. I was a member of Living Praise Church at that time in Bloomfield, New Jersey. Uh, Living Praise was a giant supporter of uh, Brother Roger and his ministry. And Brother Roger uh, visited Living Praise on a regular and reported to us. And it kept us abreast of everything his ministry was doing, which was really exciting. But this one particular time he came, he talked about being in Kenya and being in other per parts of, of, of Africa and, and planning churches. And he said that he had not seen uh, hardly any African-Americans uh, ministering and helping to plant churches in um, Africa. And that's what he wanted to see. He had planned on taking a trip to Kenya and he wanted to know if anyone wanted to go along with him. Well, I was just ready to jump out of my seat. Because uh, like I said, that was a lifelong dream. So met with them after service. And the first thing he said, which broke my heart, was that I needed a pass, needed a passport, which meant that I needed a birth certificate. And here I was, um, uh, 43 years old and did not have a birth certificate because I was told that one didn't exist for me. I had tried to get one several times. Well, lo and behold, look at how God works. I decided to, I found out a couple of days later that I could actually apply for a delayed birth certificate, which I did three weeks later, I get a birth certificate in the mail. So God is so good. So I was able to uh, fulfill a lifelong dream by traveling to Africa. Uh, Brother Roger, I just want to thank you for that. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> okay, um, so now I will turn it over to Minister Joan. Uh, Minister Joan, are you there or are you on mute? Good evening, everyone. It's just a pleasure to be able to see you all and also to be a part of this uh, event tonight. And I do want to just thank uh, Brother Roger for coming and also for speaking to us. My first introduction to meeting and finding out about Brother Roger was through Dorothy Tucker. She was my aunt. And through the Reach the World missions, she amazed our family with her efforts to go on missions in diverse places. And without the cre creature comforts that we normally take for granted, that's what amazed me. But she wanted to let others know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And through Brother Roger, he provided that opportunity with his love of the gospel and his missions and the desire that the Lord placed upon his heart to go into these countries and bring them the gospel. And my Aunt Darcy Tucker and others heeded that call to the ministry. And we thank God for Reach the World Ministries, for the beacon of light that they are. And more importantly, I just thank Roger and his wife and all those other missionaries that were able to uh, just go to those different places and preach the word. And I miss my Aunt Dot. She has gone on to be with the Lord. But I just remember all her wonderful stories about going to these wonderful places, going out there and preaching the word. 
and letting people know that God is still alive and well and that his son is there for salvation. And I just thank Brother Roger and his uh, missions and his uh, team and his wife and his family for just accepting my Aunt Dot and, and being a, a light in her life. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Amen. So this is uh, Sister Queen Sanabria Allen. Uh, I, I was a member of the Life um, uh, Living Praise Church for a number of years. As a matter of fact, I came to know Jesus Christ uh, as a member in Living Praise Church. Um, I remember uh, praying for at least a year or two, asking God to send me to a church that was going to uh, teach me how to worship and teach me how to have a true relationship with Christ Jesus. And I received that through Living Praise Church. So I'm honoring um, Pastor Ted Alleman right now because I know he's gone on in, in glory to uh, be with the Lord, but uh, he instilled a lot of fruit in, in me and in others. Um, Brother Roger, when I first heard him speak, uh, he came to the church to speak about missions and mission and his missionary work. I was intrigued by his stories about how he would talk about how they moved the hearts of many people and how they were able to change many people's lives simply through sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. But that wasn't the only thing that intrigued me with Roger, Brother Roger and his team. What really intrigued me was he exemplified the love of Christ. And when he spoke to us, I could tell that when he went out on the mission field, it wasn't just him sharing the word of God. It was him sharing the love of God and doing it through him so that people could see God and see the love of God through him and his team members. And that's, I think that's what really resonated with me more than anything was the the love that he shared it was genuine i could tell it was genuine and when when i heard that uh, i thought you know this is something that i could do locally because missions isn't just going out to another country missions is right here at home and so it stirred my heart whenever i would hear him it stirred my heart to say that i don't have to be uncomfortable about sharing my faith and the love of God mm -hmm. in love to others. And I realized then that I too can be a missionary and I, can, I too can do that missionary work with my children and now my grandchildren because oh, yeah. seven years later and I have 11 beautiful grandchildren um, through mm -hmm. my workplace and any venue that I go to. I can share that love. I can be that beacon of light. And that is what I received from Brother Roger, that we can be a beacon of light wherever we go, that we can open our hearts to other people and share that love of God. So again, thanking you, Brother Roger, for what you instilled in us when you came to Living Praise Church to share uh, with us all of your experiences and we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts for all that you're doing even now spreading the gospel of jesus christ to all those who need to hear it thank you very much we love you thank you, thank you. hallelujah hallelujah reverend yvonne <laughs> Hi, Reverend Brother Roger. I, I thought I was unmuted. I apologize. This Hello. Is, um, Yvonne Fredia, it's such a good thing to see you again. It's been such a long time. And I just want to share my experiences being in Africa with you, not realizing it was part of a journey that the Lord had led me on and what he was doing or going to do in my life. I, first of all, I have to say thank you. I've learned so much about being on the mission fields. I had a good time, but just spending time with people and speaking the word of God and ministering and preaching over there and 
having the opportunity to go down to the Tanzanians and border with you and meeting the, um, um, I'm trying to think of the tribe that was there that we I, met. Yes, I, yes. And that was a true experience sleeping underneath the tent. Um, so, and, and the fact that we was comfortable, we was not afraid, it has just blessed my heart. But what I want to say, that mission trip was the beginning of the ministry which God called me to. Because next thing I know, the Lord spoke to me and I found myself going behind the Iron Curtain by myself into Budapest. And at that time, the Serbs and the Kushans had a war going on. And I was sitting up in Brussels and those, all the soldiers are sitting there. They're looking at me like, where is this young woman going? And at that time, and I was like, okay, Lord, I know I heard your voice. And I remember before leaving, I spoke with Pastor Ted and Teresa about what the Lord had shared with me. So he got me in touch with Pastor Glenn Howitt. So I went out there and I had an opportunity to minister out there. I traveled, I learned how to travel in Budapest um, by myself. Um, and as well as teaching in the ministry and ministering at the church there. So that was a blessing. And then from that point on, next thing I know, the Lord sent me over into China. So I traveled with Nora Lamb at that time, I'm Brother Roger King. And, um, and not only did I travel and I went to the underground church with Pastor Lamb and the Holy Spirit filled me with the evidence, not only with the evidence of speaking a tongue, but he gave me the language of Mandarin Chinese. So I speak <laughs> Mandarin Chinese. So this is just the beginning <laughs> what God was doing in my life. And then he said, now I'm sending you. So this was all preparation because then the Lord sent me into, into law enforcement. And next thing I know, I was at NYPD headquarters. There was nothing they can do. Preaching the gospel, setting up the ministry, New Bridges. Before it was New Faith, New Hope, New Faith Ministry. Then it became New Bridges International Ministry. We travel over into Sweden, ministering to law enforcement over there, Tri-State International on city, state, federal level. I even became, in terms of CIA, along with the um, FBI, um, different agencies, ATF, um, DEC, DEA. So I just want to let you know, it's because of you. God used you Amen. to take me from this journey in Africa to these other countries. And I've gone other places, but I just want to share that. And I cannot ever thank you enough, your love, your compassion for the people and for what God has called you to do has blessed me. And I am so grateful and I am so thankful because you had shown what it is to be a missionary. And I thank you for it. And may God bless you and your family. And it's so good to see you, Brother Roger King. God thank bless you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Awesome. Thank, you. Awesome. thank you. Thank you. Well, I want to thank uh, Reverend Yvonne. Didn't know you spoke Mandarin. And yes, <laughs> I do. And I still do today. I still and, speak it. Uh, and, and Mr. Joe, we just like to thank all of you guys for your testimonies. I knew uh, Brother Roger was, was blessed, I could tell. Yeah. Um, right now, we want uh, uh, Reverend Lisa is going to uh, actually present uh, Brother Roger's bio to us. Okay? I thought we were going to have uh, Sister Quenisha. Are you, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not, I'm not following not. the program. <laughs> <laughs> they sent me papers. I didn't read them. <laughs> it's okay. okay. It's All okay. right, then. Yeah. I'm going to follow the program. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, Brother Roger, I'm just so blessed to have you here with us. Um, all I can say is every, all throughout all the years, even though, um, you know, I was no longer a member of Living Praise, I was always connected with Pastor Ted and always connected with the members there. And I always felt very connected to you, even though we didn't see you for a long time. And I had been praying prior to seeing you at um, Living Praise. 
I had been praying to, to see you again when I visited after our pastor went on to be with the Lord. And I said, Lord, I need to get in contact with Brother Roger. And it didn't dawn on me just to call the church office or something, but I just, I, I wanted to actually have an opportunity to, to share and um, support your ministry again. And mm -hmm. lo and behold, the day that I visited Living Praise, you were the guest speaker. And I said, oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then the Lord just said, you know, you need to have him as a guest speaker at your uh, biweekly um, prayer conference time. So I said, okay. Here we go. So I'm very honored that you would even want to speak at our biweekly uh, prayer conference time. And um, every time I think about you, my testimony would be this. Pastor Ted would always talk about you and say, you know, Brother Roger is a real missionary. He's a real missionary. And so one time he was sharing this story about utensils. He said, you know, they're all over there. They just eat with their hands. And you should see Brother Roger. He just digs his hand in there with all the rest of them. And he's eating with his hand. He's eating with his hands. And so um, Pastor Ted said to you, well, you know, well, why do you all just eat with your hands? Like, you know, there's a spoon there. Why don't you use the spoon? And he said that you had said to him, because I know where this hand has been. I don't know where that spoon has been. And so from there on, I said, no, Brother Roger's a real missionary. And he would always tell me these stories about how you did not care where you slept. You didn't care what you ate. You just, you were just on your mission with the Lord. And I remember um, one other story with uh, Aunt Dot. Um, I call her Dottie. And I was very close with her and just loved her so much. She was such an inspiration to me to go forward in what I was called to do in the ministry. And um, she would come back from some missionary trips with you and she'd say, well, pretty much, um, you know, I got in the car, he told me to duck down. They drove me down this road, down that road, down this road, down that road. About 25 minutes later, he dumped me out. He said, go in there and preach and I'll come back for you. And he comes back like nine hours later. And the whole time I'm standing there preaching the gospel to hungry, hungry people that wanted to hear what the word of God was to say. And then she said she'd go back. And there'd be a, a room with a bed and one little, barely little bit of a light. And she'd study a little more and go to sleep and, and did the same exact thing the next day. And I just said, wow, he is awesome. I said, you know, even though I was like, Dot, you're crazy. Okay, but he's awesome. <laughs> so um, you're just a blessing, a, a complete Thank blessing. You. And I just want to read a little bit of your bio and then we will proceed on with the service. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.